Hello. Welcome, my friends. Good to see you. Good morning, beautiful. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you. I think that the message about the message about us having summertime in the US has not reached everyone in in Europe. They're not changing until 31st of March. So. It's always a confusing couple of weeks when that happens. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> so good to see all of you. Michael, do you want to go by the name Virginia? Uh, no, I don't, but I, that's uh, what's the name that's going, that's appearing. I don't know how to change that. <laughs> okay. But that's my mom's name, and I live in Virginia, so we'll just go with that. We, we call you Virginia today. It's completely fine. <laughs> completely fine. All you have to do is click the upper right hand corner of those little dots and it'll give you an option to rename yourself. But wow. Virginia works for me too. Yeah, I'm I I'm fine. Hi Sophie. <laughs> and David, good to see you. Tom and Phoebe, Ella. So wonderful to see all of you. So happy that you guys are here. And so happy, and Sebastian, hello. And Leela, I'm just gonna make you co-host, there we go. And Ayla, so good to see you, been a while. Okay, I think we're gonna start, I think that a lot of Europeans are gonna drop in in about an hour's time, not everybody in Europe that has got the message that we have changed to summertime here in the US. Uh, everybody from Europe that are already here, Sebastian and Sunni and um, well done. <laughs> Keeping up on when other parts of the world have summertime. Okay, before we start, I just want to come with the uh, with an announcement. Um, we have, we've we've been wanting to do this for a while, and now we decided to do it. That we're gonna do an um, a paid online retreat, that is going to be a, a full week, and it's going to be in week twenty four, which is the tenth to the sixteenth of June. Um, because we have so many people in different time zones, um. We're going to do it where there's a morning meditation and then there's a um, 10 a.m. sofa session where we talk about about the, the topic. The topic for the retreat is the feathers and the bubble of reality. And we're going through all the 10 feathers and looking at it from the bubble of reality. So how you use the bubble of reality and use the feathers and implement it into your life. And it's going to be with the, a morning meditation and a sofa session at 10 um, Eastern time, and then a Q&A around two Eastern time, and then an evening meditation that is going to be specific for, for the day, uh, for the topic that we have had throughout the day. And we're going to do it where the moment you you are interested or you're signing up, then you're gonna get an email with um, a link to an unlisted playlist on YouTube because the meditations are going to be pre-recorded. So even if you're in a time zone where it doesn't fit with the morning meditation and evening meditation, you can do it on your own accord. Um, there's also going to be a detox add-on for anybody who wanna you know, add on extra for the retreat with lots of different things. Yeah, to, yeah, June 10th and the entire week. So it's going to be a lot and it's going to be a, uh, I can recommend you, you know, taking a week off screen so you really do it. It's gonna be very much about embodiment, about getting all the feathers and the knowledge about um, 
about the bubble of reality into a lived experience. So it's very much about taking it from the head into the body. And we're going to have it so every all the recordings are going to be in an unlisted playlist on, on YouTube. So you can access it as long as YouTube exists, which means that you can do the retreat as many times as you want to. There will be the morning meditations, the evening meditations, the Q&A, the, the sofa sessions about the topic, um, the retreat detox retreat add-on is going to be there and we're going to email you all the written material as well so you have like a full package that, that, that you can do in whichever form you want to do if you just want to maintain with the meditations afterwards or if you want to do a full retreat with friends or whatever you want to do so it's like a full package deal with way too much material and then you can pick and choose on the retreat days, how you want to do it, and you can do it in whichever way you want to do it afterwards. So as you know, us bombarding you with material, and then it's up to you how much you want to go in with it when we do the retreat. So it's just to give a heads up about it. We're super, super excited. We've really been wanting to do this for a while, and we are super, super excited. So yes, that was one thing. Uh, we're going to give you much more information when we get closer to it. This is three months from now. So there is time to get into the mindset and to uh, to get used to it. And when we start to upload video into the, into the playlist, we're going to let you know. So you will have it and be prepared. Okay, that was it. The next thing I want to say is, as you know, we are in the sixth feather. Um, and the meditation I would like to do now before we start the Q&A, I would like to do with a focus on the sixth feather as well. It's going to be with open eyes. And what I would like for you to have a focus on is a lot of time when we work with the sixth feather, it's very much about the subject that is here and the object that is out there. And what we're doing with all the exercises is obviously dissolving the perceived because that is only happening in your brain. It's not reality, any of it. But in the beginning, when we work with the sixth feather, there's like this little sensation of kind of like a little kernel, you know, a little seed that is sitting here in the subject of serving. And in the exercise I would like for you to do today, every time you feel that sensation of an observer of somebody who's observing what is happening out there, I would like for you to kind of go back and look into it. So the exercise for you in the moment when you have that sensation of somebody observing or a me observing, then go into feeling into where where is it exactly located? So it's back to the first feather about the separate self. Where is it that that is experienced? Because even though you have dissolve the separate self and you have you know there's not a separate self when we start to play with the sixth feather we get into that sensation of somebody observing it's not going to be dissolved completely until the eighth feather so it's completely fine that you still feel that and it's completely fine that that is still the felt experience we haven't done all the exercises yet to the eighth feather and it's not until the eighth that that is going to be completely dissolved but it's just good already now to become aware of it and also with all the exercises for next month you're getting exercises every single Monday that is p picking more apart until the last one where when we're playing with sanity you know where's you know what is really observed but it's just really good already now to become aware of looking the other way in so make yourself comfortable and if you can look out a window that would be great if there's something outside where it feels like there's a horizon that you can look at, even though you're looking at the neighbor's building, it still seems as if it's further away. So make yourself comfortable and uh, let your eyes look out the window, make a deep breath in and exhale. And feel for every exhalation you do. That you get heavy in your body.
you're falling into gravity. The body gets more and more heavy. And if it's a little bit complicated here in the beginning to do it with open eyes, then feel free to close your eyes. When you're centering into the body, feeling your feet. And notice now when I'm saying feet, if there's a mental image of feet, or if you're looking down to the feet. But feel the feet. And your angles on your knees. And again, notice if the mind is creating a mental image of angles and knees. And notice also if that mental image of feet and angle and knees, if it's even your feet, angles and knees, or if it's just generic image that the mind is picking. and your thighs and feel the heaviness of the bum and the thighs in the seat. And again, notice if the mind is creating an image. So the mind is occupied with the image instead of you feeling into the felt sense of the thighs and the bum. And do an inhalation and a kegel at the same time. Add the energy up the spine on the inhalation. And release the kegel. And exhale. When you do a kegel, you get in contact with the root chakra. That is in the perineum. And it's easier to get the sensation up the spine up to the top of your head. And notice the entire body on the front and the right side and the left side. And again, check in with the mind. Is the mind creating an image of the front of the body and the right side and the left side? Or do you stay in the felt experience? There's nothing wrong if the mind is creating an image. It's just an image. And above you and below you. And I would like for you to make a deep inhalation and feel the lungs behind the body. So the back of the lungs. Feel your tummy and your back from behind the body. And again, what is happening in the mind? Have you zoomed out from the body and you're sitting and kind of observing the body from the outside? Is there felt sense of a self that is observing? Know that that is a creation of the mind is part of a identification that is hidden. We have small bubbles of identification that we rarely become aware of. And this is one of them. And if you have your eyes closed, then open your eyes and look out the window.
what happened to the sense of reality when you opened your eyes? Was it like everything became more real when you started to see? And what do you actually see? Do you recognize? What do you really see? Or focus on something outside the window and see how the mind immediately is putting a label on it. In my case, there's a tree and branches. And in that label, there's identification, first of all. I say it's a tree, so it better be a tree. So there's a fourth feather want that is maintaining what I'm seeing, fitting into the mold of a tree. And there's a fifth feather, aversion, of noticing anything that does not fit into the mold of a tree. So in the sixth feather, what we're doing is Questioning everything you think you see. How do you know that is, in my case, a tree that you're looking at? Whatever you're looking at, if it's not a tree, question. How do you know what this is? Are you sure? What color does it have? And how do you know? Are you sure? And while we're sitting here, what I started to say, if you feel that little kernel of a self sitting and looking out at the tree or what it is you're looking at, then notice that it feels like there's a line between an eye here, a self here, and the tree out there. And a way to dissolve it is go out to the end of the line and look back. What are you looking at? And who is looking? And you, if that is the case for you, that you have that little kernel of an identification, then just do the first feather exercises that we taught you. Go into the felt sense. Since we're sitting and looking, there's a contraction in the eyes. Is that the cell? Or is it just a contraction in the eyes? And keep dissolving if you have a little self, a little kernel of a self sitting in there. And when you're ready, then go back to looking at what it is you're looking at and releasing the fourth feather of wanting it to be something and the fifth feather of not wanting it to be something. And whatever part you're looking at, you see that there's a lot of parts that you cannot see that the mind has added as a gestalt. 
So in my case, I'm looking at branches. My mind has created an idea that those branches are connected to a tree somewhere. I can't see the tree. But in my mind's eye, there is a tree. Detach that. So what is it you're actually looking at? In my case, there's something dark that is drawn on something that looks like a white background. And even that can be reversed. That the darkness is behind the white or on par the white. And even that can be dissolved into it actually not being a window, but a painting, flat painting. And it's not branches, it's just abstract painting. And again, if you get the feeling of a self sitting and observing, and go back, go out to the observed and look back, question what you're looking at and dissolve. And if you get any kind of contraction of fear of what we're doing and just fill into that can you be in a body and if none of that is happening happening just sit and look at the flat painting And if you can, I would like for you to question the colors. If you're watching this as a recording, or if you're doing this exercises, these exercises on your own, then sit as long as you want to and see what the experience is and where it takes you. When you're not attaching a self, when you're not attaching four and five, anything that you're looking at can be, it's free to develop into being whatever I want to be. Just like clouds can create images of lots of different things. You allow whatever you're looking at to do the same. Change colors and structures and And the shortcut to this sensation is that feeling of quietness, stillness, simplicity, and contentment that you feel right now. That's the shortcut. And this sensation in the body is here all the time. Also when you forget it. So at any point you can Take the shortcut into stillness, simplicity, and contentment. And start to dissolve anything you perceive as, a, as reality by setting it free and setting you free.
Okay, I'll like you to close your eyes. Go back to the body. Move your feet, your fingers. Make a deep breath. And open your eyes. How was that? Loved it. <laughs> the uh, instruction to go out and then look back was, was powerful. Um, that seems like a diff. it seems like a, a it, it seems like a view that's different from then when the sensation of being in the body and looking out yeah. or because there still is a, 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 a sense of, of locality a bit so there's a sense of <clears throat> but when I get out there or the idea to go out to the end of the line which I didn't feel a line but I just went out to the end of perception I guess you could say at that moment looked back there was a sense of not not seeing anything um yeah. nothing was there um but from this side looking that way as I just sat and really focused um everything turned very flat it was totally a painting and the very edges all the edges of perception were uh just like uh, snowflakes it wasn't it was all very uh Related. ethereal yeah. you know was really nothing to hold on to yeah 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 <clears throat> it's really really funny because we have when it's why the sixth feather is the fun feather because it's where it's where we really realize that whatever we perceive as reality, it's happening at zero distance. It's happening in the brain. There's nothing out there. Everything you look out at is created in the brain. And it's, it's created as much as if I say elephant. For your inner eye right now, you see an elephant. And it's the same way that all that is created. That's not an elephant. And anything that is out there is not there either. It's just what the brain is is mimicking and creating uh, if you have glasses it it helps or if you have any type of you know things with the eyes it helps taking the glasses off and and seeing that there's no difference between that and when the glasses are on it's it's that recognition that that, that the mind is creating that's like this going back and forth into what we recognize um, and when we set things free to be as they are it also changes. So you can go for a walk if it's like, you know, the twilight where where it's a bit dusk and you can see how thing how the mind is trying to make sense of what you're seeing further down the road. That it can change and morph into lots of different things and everything is as believable as the thing you just thought it was just before. So yeah, it's, it's the fun feather. Thank you, Lisa. Um, Irene? Hello. Yeah, for me, hi. It was just the, when I went further out, it was just that the, the body just became another object of perception. And, uh, and there was just freedom in that. Mm -hmm. So when you when you went when you went out, how was the center experience in the body? Can you describe that? Um, well, I I think I was less in the body or feeling less awareness in the body and more awareness of of the body just being just like the tree. So I'm not sure that I was feeling the body so much. The body was just, there was just relaxation in the body. And I was seeing, 
I don't know, maybe it's a little confusing, um, but it just felt like another object within perception. Yeah. The, the, the interesting thing when we start to really dissolve it is that that because we have the, the meat suit and the meat suit has the senses, the seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, those receptors do not go offline just because we see through self and we and the part of recognition through the, through the seeing sense and that we become aware of that. Mm -hmm. the, the, the felt sense is still the same. The heart is still beating. All of that is happening without an eye being present. And it's really interesting starting to, that is where it taps into the ninth feather, where, where all this that is happening in the meat suit is just happening on, all on its own. That uh, the feeling sense of sitting or the moving sense now of feeling of the fingers moving through the air, the, the feeling of the air on the fingers when I do this, it's like experienced with... Um, with no skin in the game, if I can say it like that, that there's, there's nobody here. There's nobody home. It's just a sensory pickup from the meat suit. Mm -hmm. And when, when you look at something and you set that free to be as it is, um, so there's no image of that being a branch and that being a bird sitting on the branch, but it's just um, shadows and that's mm -hmm. set free, then this is set free as well. Mm. That's when, that's when it, it starts to become wonderful moving through life because everyone are set free. There's just mm. compassion and space for everything. And 10th feather, who am I to know anything? I don't even know how it feels to have a body. That's my experience in life moving through life. That's my experience of just this spaciousness. And yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. Thank yeah. you. I just want to say, you know, as um as just a note that if what we're sitting and talking about now, you go like, what? What is she talking about? What does she mean? There's nobody, there's nobody experiencing. And you feel completely, I have no idea what they talk about. Then that's okay too. It's completely okay. It's not that that anyone are further along. It's just different experiences. It's just different experiences. And whatever you are experiencing, it's just as valid. So don't feel that you are uh, not experiencing the right thing if all you could do was sit on your bum and look at a tree and your bum stayed the same and the tree stayed the same and you could not go out and being the tree and looking back at you and all that is just utter nonsense if that is your experience it's completely fine it's completely fine that is a lot of awareness in what is experienced as well it's just a different way of experiencing so don't feel that you're experiencing anything wrong or you're doing anything wrong because you can't. You can't. Everything is fine. Lisa? Well, I was going to offer Petra to go ahead of me since I just spoke. I just, I have to leave before the end of this meeting. And so I, I know I have a definite couple of questions from the curriculum, but I'll, I'm willing go to. Go on, we're here. Go oh, on. Okay. I just, I don't want to, yeah, I want to be a hog. Anyway, okay, and, so go can I just, as, as, as a suggestion, uh, ask you to work with that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, so going back through the curriculum and our, our, our questions, um, our conversation last week, which was really good. In two instances, as you were introducing the meat of the curriculum, you um, <clears throat> talked about the Fetter 4 and 5 pushing and pulling on images uh, when there's just a raw sa sensation of, of seeing and then pushing and pulling on images in order to put some 
put down some kind of foundation to believe in, let's say, um, that at some point you, you come to realize that and then it is just sound happening. And then the so sound dissolves. You use that phrase and then the sound dissolves twice in our conversation during last week's meeting, or maybe it was, was it with Todd? I don't know anyway. I can't we, remember either. I don't either. But, I can't but, remember uh, much but since, you know, 10 minutes ago. So that, I got you. I believe you can I, but I, for once I wrote notes because I know I can't count on myself to remember this stuff. And then again, a little bit later on in that same conversation about Fetter 4, 5, 6, and 7 all being related, which was, yeah. I loved that part. Um, when you see that there's no pushing and pulling yes. needed or happening or however, yeah. then it's just sound happening and then the sound dissolves. So you use that, then the sound dissolves twice. Yeah. And I got to thinking, okay, I want the question I have is, what were you meaning by that? Are you meaning that, I mean, sound arises out of nothing and disappears into nothing? That's the dissolution. Or are you meaning that somehow there's some additional dissolution? Yes. Um, Yes. Okay. Yes. Go. No. Yeah. Okay. It's multiple things because it's in different layers, depending on which feather we talk about. Four or five, there's a sound of a dog barking, right? First of all, there's the, I don't like the dog and there's the neighbor's dog and I hate the neighbor and they shouldn't have the dog and all of that. That out of the way, there's a dog barking. Then there's a sound when the sound begins and when the sound ends. That means that we are still attached to the four five where there's, I want a dog bark to sound in a certain way. You know, like Todd, he mentioned in the, in the sofa set that if it has been like, you heard something fall, if it had been like, and I said, it was the soap dispenser that would not, that would not correlate. And it's the same thing we have with any sound that it needs to match the image that we have in our, in our mind. So if you hear a dog bark and somebody says, that's an elephant, you're gonna go, no. And that's the four or five that you, you want it to be in a certain way, it cannot be in another way. That needs to be let go too, which means that now there's not even a label on the sound anymore. The next thing we're gonna explore is the beginning of the sound. So it's like, kind of like if I have these two objects here so there's a pen here density here and there's a finger here in between here there's nothing there right so there's a density in the field and a density in the field per perceived as a density in the field there's not but we say it's it's experienced as a density and a density and less density in the field here so the closer that the finger goes to the pen the distance between those two become less and until both of them are touching that is the same that is happening with all the sense fields so it's like there's a silence and a sound beginning and a sound happening and a sound ending and silence when we talk about adult bark right in the seventh feather that can only happen if you apply time and that's why i i you know did my favorite song no that was in this group it was in another group I did my favorite song, you know, seven feather song. Let me sing you a seven feather song. Ah, if you and seven feather, you would not realize that that is just one tone because the seven feather is the solving time, which means that when you hear a sound, we attach time to it. You can only know that I just said one tone by attaching time to it. When you dissolve time, that was not one tone, that was a snippet of a song. And that's the same thing we do with the sound with the dog bark. So if you remove time, there's not silence, sound and silence. There's just this, where there's no anything that could be any different, no attachment, no dissolving of anything. It, it's just this. Then when the dog bark happens with the seventh feather, there's no adding of anything because it is as it is. There's nothing that is added to it. There's nothing that could be subtracted to it. So there's no sound, which is what I mean. It's dissolved because there's nothing different. And after the dog bark, it's the same thing, same experience. There's no experience on, and a memory of a dog bark. 
which means that nothing can ever annoy you because there's no comparison with anything. You can only compare with, with things when you use time. In the seventh feather, when we apply the seventh feather, nothing can annoy you. Nothing can can be, you know, it's what I'm talking about with same experience if you're having a root canal or warm bath, same experience because there's no comparison in time with anything. And that is what I mean with it dissolving, that there's nothing that has any structure because structure can only happen in a comparison with time. So, and that that is what I mean with dissolving. Oh my gosh, that's so beautiful. Such a simple uh, explanation and it just absolutely makes so much sense. Oh my gosh. Ooh, that's profound. Thank you. So, so when you hear people say, you know, like they broke in the fetters, but they still get annoyed. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, really? I just, I'm not trying to get in a position where I evaluate things, but I get confused by hearing people say stuff like that. Yeah, I understand. I, I, I think, I think the, the worst thing we can do in anything in life, it's compare, you know, first of all, who are we to question anybody's experience? Well, exactly. I, I mean, annoyance can be there. It can be like a yeah, moment. Then, then it's not annoyance, is it? No, it's just a label, right? No, 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 no. In seven feta, it's not even annoyance. It can't yeah. be annoyance because you can only have annoyance if you have a comparison with anything. Sure. That means you can't be annoyed. You can't be annoyed. Anybody can say anything that can annoy you. So you can't say all the feathers have fallen, but I'm still getting annoyed. How would you know if all the feathers have fallen? Exactly. You know, the sixth feather exactly. is not, the, the tenth feather is not knowing. You do not know what it means to be annoyed. Right, right. You do not right. know what it means not to be annoyed because Thank all you. the Thank levels you. are gone. So when somebody says all the tether, all the feathers have dropped and I still get aggravated and annoyed, you can't have any opinion about that. If all the ten of if all the feathers have fallen and somebody says that, you can't have any opinion about it because it's their experience and who are you to know? Right. Well, I haven't broken the 10th fetter, so I hear and that. So you, I, you're still, still super just <laughs> going to learn that. <laughs> well, I, yeah, when I hear that and I get, I just get like confused. Like, yeah, I know. And it's, it's, one, it's one of the things that, that we talk a lot about, you know, how can we, how can we support people in knowing that you cannot compare with anything? And if anybody says that the awakening experience is like being on shrooms day and night, and do not compare with that. It's not it's not your experience, it's their experience. Just like there yeah. are, you know, nine billion ways of feeling barefoot walking in the grass, it's the same with the awakening. We cannot compare our experience with anyone. And for some exactly. people, it's like, you know, I can hear people sit and talk about the awakening going like, wow, what a ride. Not my experience at all. But but who am I to judge and say that it can't be or it's it's not right or anything, you know? But I, but I understand that it can be immensely confusing. And you, I mean, we listened to somebody I can't remember. It's a while ago now. We're taught, but he said, "I don't, I don't think I have broken any of the feathers. If that is awakening, I haven't broken anything." <laughs> but it's just, I know, I know, it's super, super confusing. But comparison yeah. is the worst thing we can do. Well, the beauty of the of the statement that you make over and over and just did <clears throat> is set everything free yeah. to be what it is. And um, yeah, that's that's really lovely. And like you said, if, if yeah, there's if there's comparison, there's time and it's just yeah, you're walking down the, a different road. It's OK. Yeah, and, and and maybe not. Maybe the road is just, you know, this wet grass is just experienced like that. That wet grass is experienced in on somebody else's bare feet differently you know sure yeah yeah and confusion is kind of fun it's like oh wow what's going on like oh wow confusion uh, this is really juicy it feels juicy yeah but but confusion can only happen if you have an expectation to things being in a certain way and that's four or five um mm -hmm. yeah yeah, and 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 all and, and the great thing about expectation is that you always put yourself as a victim. You know, 
it's super wonderful to experience when you have expectations because you have put yourself in an exp in in a seat that is lower than what then understand me right then what you actually are sitting in so so yes. why is that why is that yeah, you know why, why why is that need suddenly there that wasn't there before you know expectation I mean, yeah i would just say it's a confusion maybe is it i don't know it just if confusion is isn't always Confusion is well, it's expectation, yeah. That because you can. That's, that's so weird. It doesn't feel like expectation. Yeah, but but, but look, you're you're going in with down, slow, yeah. Slow down, slow down, slow down. If you have, if you're confused, then it's mm. because something is in a in a different way than you expected it to be. Right, right. That's an so, expectation. So, yeah. So so you expected awakening to be that there's no annoyance and irritation left anywhere and then somebody says i have passed all the 10 feathers and i get annoyed all the time with my neighbor because he is a jerk then you will be confused because you had an expectation about awakening meaning that you do not get annoyed and do not think the neighbors is a jerk so your expectation is tied in to into the awakening experience yes yes i see that and by setting you free and setting others free, anybody can experience it in whichever way they're experiencing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's it. I mean, there's no doubt about the power of those those words. No doubt. Set everybody and everything free to be. Yeah, as it is. Be. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And 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 if some if somebody says that you know. I'm judging my neighbor and I have passed all the 10 feathers and annoyance is still happening. And that is my experience. Then it's just like, wow. Okay. Amazing. Yeah. Right. Exactly. That, Oh boy, that just feels so good yeah. to hear that and have it because I'm, as you know, as much as I love the POK community, there's a lot of kind of community stuff that like, I don't, I'm not trying to yeah, be critical or anything, but, I'm trying to get super clear about the influences that are seemingly, you know, and it's, I mean, I'm not trying to be a victim here. That sounds like victimhood. <laughs> anyway. Okay. I'm finished. Well, Lisa, you also need to set yourself free now, because if, if you have, if you have a dissonance and, and something is happening and it's giving a dissonance in the body and you can feel that there's something, there's something not right, then be honest and and investigate. Don't don't be spiritual arrogant, and going mm. like I'm not supposed to feel anything about anyone. Don't be spiritual arrogant. If you mm. feel something, be honest, be authentic. I feel something. I need help with what I'm feeling. I can't place it, and it really bothers me. Then reach out to somebody that you trust, mm -hmm. and, and then talk mm -hmm. about it. Talk about yes, it. Yes, you're not yeah. you're, you're not lesser than by experiencing confusion it's completely fine reach out and speak to someone you trust i'm happy to you know if you want to talk and we can pause the recording and all of that um so, so yeah. You, yeah but no it's not only to you it's to everyone if anybody wants to talk about something and you want the recording post then just tell me we're pausing the recording and the uh, thing about this to me too pranilla is that these things are so subtle in yes. other words they're it's like they sneak around and poison the water or something they're very very subtle and tasteless and yeah so yeah but i there's definitely something if you pick up, if you pick up on something remember that the mirror is in you the bubble of reality yes. is in you, that that there's something in you that is affecting by somebody going like did, did you see what janice did the other day in a group <laughs> if you hear yeah. that and you feel in you will go like hey, I can't deal with that. Then, you know, be authentic. This is what is happening right now. I have on multiple occasions when people start to talk about other people and not there saying, I'm so sorry to interrupt. I'm not comfortable talking about other people that are not here. Could we wait until Janice is here and then talk about it out in the open? And then it that completely kills. And then they can talk about me behind my back when I'm not there anymore. <laughs> but, you know, but it, it's about that being completely clear on your boundaries what what you are fine with and not fine with 
can I jump in here, if I may? Yes. Only because yes, yes, I want yes. to no, no, just that thank you. Is... Because you're wonderful. Just to say that, Pip. Hello, Leona. Sorry, I don't want to jump the queue, but it's just relevant to what you're talking about. Because I'm kind of conflicted a bit in the same way as Lisa is. Because Christiana's my guide and Kevin Sh Shellenek's approach is very uh, linear. And it's really lovely to hear how you see it, but it's completely uh, a different view that he takes that you can't, you simply can't have dropped a later feta if there's still frustration or anger. And I've, I, I, I believe I've dropped feta eight now. Um, and I'm work, I'm just kind of um, clarifying that with Christiana, um, just letting things settle. Um, and yet there is still some, even though four five is completely weakened uh, and there's there's still frustration happens but it's not quite the same as it used to be and I'm kind of I'm a bit conflicted because you know both approaches are saying different things about it yeah and I, I just I just want to clarify where it starts to be you know dissonance or because Kevin has uh, in a POK meeting can he, Kevin Shen like he has in a POK meeting said that eight years after all the 10 feathers dropped, he went into therapy because he felt that his life was a zero sum game. He could not give a compliment to another person without feeling that he went into minus. So he can't both say that you cannot drop all the 10 feathers until there's nothing left. And at the same time say, except me. So there, there's a dissonance in it. Yeah. And and what I'm saying is that that I completely understand what he's talking about. It's why we are working with the feathers in a different way. So it would have welcomed Kevin. So he could have looked into the trauma earlier. And instead of seeing it as a ladder and feeling that what is a Christiana saying now that trauma is the 11th feather. Instead of saying that and starting to create more stuff outside of what the Buddha created, then seeing that, okay, we just work with things in a different way where it's more circular. Maybe, maybe you can't look into deeper trauma until you have released the sense of a deeper eye in the eight feather. And then you can go back. Or maybe you can't work with, with releasing boundaries until you realize that, oh my goodness, I can, I'm, I'm thinking life is a zero-sum game. If I give you a compliment, I'm in minus. That's why I cannot release the boundaries, which means back to the second feather, work with my trauma. Um, yeah. So so I'm not saying that that Kevin and Christian, the way that they're working with it is not right because it has helped hundreds of people. You know, it's super, super useful for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that that it's it's important to to stay in your own lane and experience what what it is you're experiencing and i so, completely agree because so, i'm not in control exactly, yeah, exactly exactly yeah. exactly some things is useful sometimes other things are useful other times sometimes you want to listen to kendrick lamar and other times it's you know vivaldi you know it's it's, it's some things are useful for different things and the way that we work with the feathers is trying to make it as as organic and flowing and uh, alive as possible where you're not limiting yourself into a little confined box but you allow to set things free and allow what is coming up to come up like the conversation we're having now there's a conflict lying in you okay out in the open with it there's no talking bad about anybody or holding anything against anyone it's just experiencing things in our own way making it alive and making it you know um, actual in in the lift experience yeah 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 it's it's also a different way of working with it because kevin and christiana are very much working with it that you that you pick it up four or five times a day and between that you don't really do it the way todd and i do it is you live it you know it's the feathers every single breath you take every single exhalation you do everything you pick up everything you eat everything you the way you talk on the phone the feathers are present all the time in your lived experience. And that is why it's the only way you can do it when you don't have any boundaries between them, but allow to step in and out of them all the time because they're present all the time. It's just, 
The feathers are not real. It's just concepts. It's 10 different ways of identifying. Let's look at all 10 right away, work with all 10 right away and see what becomes alive when we do that. Mm -hmm. Just a different way. But Leona, I would like to, to get back to, you said something. Um, could you repeat the part about uh, what was it you said? Could you repeat? Could you remember what you said? <laughs> I didn't make a note. I didn't make a note. <sighs> it was something about the that you still felt. So oh, I felt. I still. I still can feel frustration, but it's. I think it's falling apart, but there's still some something left there. So it's puzzling me how I can I how I can be a non-existence where nothing exists and there is that you know there is no me anymore and there's nothing out there and yet I'm still able to get frustrated. How, what what how does how is the frustration felt? Um, it's been a while, but it was, uh, uh, like an explosion inside, Okay, but, it, but now it's not quite like that. Um, uh, yeah. Could, could, can you give me an example of, of now how it feels? Um, it was, I haven't ha had frustration for a bit, but I was, I felt really, I felt really hurt and sad by something. Those are emotions and thoughts. Yeah. What is so so a sensory experience because it's a feedback loop. So there's a thought hurt and sad. How is that felt into the body? Oh, it's just feels it feels here. Um God, it's hard to describe it. Like there's a blanket and there's a sort of weight a weight. <clears throat> so if you detach the thought of this blanket that you have here being hurt, if you detach that thought about it and just sit with a sensory experience of something happening here, then you feel how this here change because it's no longer restricted by the label hurt. Mm. And then it will start to morph. And the moment it starts to morph and be something else, it's going to activate a feedback loop up to a thought saying, it has moved into my stomach. Now I'm nauseated says the label. So you detach the label, go into the sensation in the body, feel that it's more about solar plexus now, and it's more like, you know, constricting. Then you do the same thing without the label. You detach the label and you sit with a sensory experience of something happening in, in the solar plexus, in this area right here. And when you don't have any label attached to it, it takes between seven to 11 seconds for it to morph into something else which again will activate the feedback loop up to a thought. And if you keep following that around, at the end, all of it is dissolved. And whatever irritated or annoyed you is not a factor anymore. Yeah, it's not a factor anymore when you've done that, but in the moment it was. And I'm, I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm aware that if you take away the label and you just sit with sensation, then it can change and resolve itself. But that doesn't happen in that moment of frustration. When I'm overwhelmed, I'm autistic as well, so there's too much information coming in. Um, but anyway, it's, it is, it is changing. But I'm just kind of watching it, and I was kind of puzzled by how can I, how can, how can nothing exist, and yet there's this still something running maybe running itself down running itself out of the system i think but yeah um, because it, it, Biden said don't worry it will it will resolve itself yeah um the the most important my opinion the most important part is the embodiment of it it's that going into the body all the time detaching the thought all the time going into the body and also as an naughty going into the sensory experience all the time detach so i just stay with the meat suit and there's no emotions or anything with it. It's just experience happening in the meat suit, different sensations happening in the meat suit. And very, very often pictures of childhood or pictures of previous experiences come up and then I go with it. When we come to the seventh feather, 
I'm walking you through how you time travel into previous experiences and to solve it in the time when is that. And that is when the the memory is becoming a complete blank slate, that there's nothing there anymore. Um, but yeah, I'm, I would be curious if you would be up for it, looking into when, hope, hopefully it will happen too. I hope you're going to get super, super irritated very shortly. And uh, <laughs> and then you have, the, you know, can can do the exercise and really let go of the mind and feeling into the body. And for those seven to 11 seconds, just stay with that and see where it takes you. I'm super, super curious about that. I mean, I do that. I do do that when I, um, if something comes. Yeah. 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 So Leona, it, in a way it kind of sounds like, and this is just, you know, from my bubble of reality that you're, you're making the a momentary frustration, kind of making it into a problem. Is that the way it feels like it's a problem to have a frustration or maybe it's more just about, like you said, it's like, how could this be possible? Basically. I think that's changed. It was, a I was made, I was a bit fixated on it a while ago and it was a problem. So you're absolutely right. I'm not sure that it is because I'm not sure how it's unfolding now where, because it hasn't happened recently, but I'm just kind of keeping an eye on it. Hmm. Yeah. Because yeah, I mean, I've done a lot of work on four five, a lot of work, as you know. Yeah, you're you're absolute four and five queen. If anybody <laughs> wants wants a good guide or talk to somebody that knows about four five work, it's definitely honest. She's the four five queen. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, both of you. I love you guys so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Wonderful. And then it is Petra. Hello, my friend. Hi, everyone. Uh, good to see you, Fernando. And good to thank see you, you. Yeah. for doing this. Um, it's very helpful. Um, it's also challenging. Um, I had some stuff I wanted to look into with you and some questions from Friday two weeks ago, but now I think I just want to start with what's coming up today and maybe see where that goes. And um, so the root canal and the warm bath. <laughs> yeah, that's always the, my alarm clock <laughs> is ringing. And um, yeah, I'm, I think that will lead actually to what I want to look in with you as well, maybe a bit in a circle. Um, so the identification, the first feather, um, I think I seen through. And when I started, I always thought like, if I see through, that means that will not play anymore. And I realized that's not so. So I'm still on the playground, but I see it's a game. Um, and then when it comes to this root canal warm bath, um, so I'm experiencing migraines and headaches since I'm five years old. And when I hear things like that, I'm always thinking they never had like a month's migraine day and night, because then it's somehow hard to believe or feel I'm not the body. But over the years, and, and also with what you said, and I found that before, like cutting the story and just stay with the raw sensations, it's like, yeah, it's it, it's moving, it's... And, and I cannot even say I suffer the pain often. I get up, I do my stuff. It, it's changed a lot, and I'm not sure if the pain changed. But I think there is somehow also a belief like if I'm not that body, there shouldn't be pain or why is still pain experience? Even though, like I just said, when I really look into it, often it's not felt as pain. And so that's one thing. And the other thing is like with the body, yes, body no. So sometimes I don't know, like right now I have a situation, I 
am invited to give a workshop um, far away and flying 11 hours. That's like my body already says no, it's too much. I, my limit is around five, six hours and then my whole body starts to hurt. And also, I don't want to say no because of a fear of what may happen. But that makes it hard for me because the proof is every time I fly longer, my body does hurt. And so that's for me the, the tricky part. Like, um, and then I feel like oh, I'm, I'm so stuck in that story and just, just go and see maybe this time it's different. But I feel, so I don't know if this, when the body reacts, is that good to listen to and say, no, I'm not going to do it because there is like my nerve system, everything starts to, to work? Or is it saying maybe you're just afraid of doing that and just do it? And often I'm just like God, challenging myself and I'm just doing it. But it feels like, yeah, I want to listen to myself, but also not being stuck in a story of, of maybe what happened in, in, in the past. And maybe the last thing also going with that, why do we not believe our thoughts? And I'm a coach of the work of Byron Katie, so I'm, I, I know what a thought does, but then why do we say, look at the body, at the sensation, if apparently, ultimately, the body is not real either? So that's also a thing I'm trying to, to figure out. Or maybe that's along the feathers, it will work out. I'm on the fifth. I wanted to catch up with you guys and doing the sixth, but I'm still in the fourth doing yeah, the... Yeah, yeah the, no, the, yeah. No, back, I, again, back again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, I yeah. Oh my goodness. There's so many things in what you're saying. I can't address all of them, but there's so many things. I would definitely recommend you to go to to work with the with the first feather. And when you have worked through the first, the second, and the third, go back and do the same sequence again. And if you can do the work that you know from Byron Katie, we might as well use what you already know. So if you can work with that and really question every single experience that you have, then, then you will be ready to move on to the fourth. But because there's so much identification in everything you say, there's, yeah. there's a hook into a belief of a separate self. There's a hook in, into a belief of the pain body. And there's a, there's a hook into expectations, which makes you immensely forceful and all that needs to be looked at with loving eyes and with lots of compassion. When, when mm -hmm. you, for example, say that, that, um, um, that flying long and the body does hurt. Um, so maybe you should just, you know, say no, or you should, you know, just, you know, eat it. It's, it's just going to be painful and that's it. For that to be true, for that to be real, can, that can only happen if you maintain the starting point. If you have a starting point with an expectation of when you fly 14 hours, you are sitting in your seat and 14 hours later you get off the seat and you are jumping as a little spring bunny because you feel great. If that is the expectation and that is how it is for you to fly, um, for that to happen, there is lots of expectations. There's not only that one expectation. There's lots of expectations in a sequence that is happening. Every single thing needs to be seen through. And when I mean seen through, it's not only understand it intellectually, it's into the body, felt into the body. Because for every single thing where you have, um, let's say, um, Let's say that what is going to relieve your body is whistling um, happy tunes. And you think, I cannot sit and whistle 14 hours happy tunes on the flight. What will all the other people in the flight think? I cannot do that. That is looking into the second feather of your of 
previous traumas, of you taking up space, of you feeling into the body, having your needs met. There's so many identification happening in every single sentence you said. Um, and by pushing through and wanting to be where the rest of the group is, it's we're we're, we're nowhere. <laughs> we're nowhere. It's not like like um like somebody is ahead of you uh, and you are behind. You no, are... I think I understand that. That's not like a thing. And and also I feel I have um like this connection with my being is here since I'm since I'm a child. And for example, this exercise we just did is very I I I really feel like um often there is no separation between me and 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 the tree. It's just like it's just like one, it's really spacious. And and then it's like it's like both. Here. But, for, but for example, it's the same with pain. It's the same with pain. That having an expectation about how things are supposed to be. Is giving you more pain. Um, mm -hmm. So I I completely, I completely feel with you with having migraine since you were five because migraine is so debilitating. Any kind of chronic pain, it's so debilitating. It's. Um, I had Edison's. Uh, I I was in an accident and I sustained a brain injury and I uh, got secondary Addison's disease and went in and out of Addison crisis multiple times. And uh, every time I came out of a crisis, <clears throat> I was on very, very high medication. And when I started to go down in my medication, the body went into immense pain, immense pain. It was like feeling wind on my cheek and it was like, so 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 painful so i couldn't do anything and i remember i was sitting uh, the only thing that i could do <laughs> was at some point was where to feel joy was sitting in my garden feeding um chopped up a uh, carrot to my worms in my garden and sitting just watching the worms eat and be in now and now and now and not having any kind of expectation of when i would be able to move because i couldn't move uh, the body was in so much pain, I couldn't move. So just, you know, sitting there and not having any expectation for anything to change ever. And the whole world was a little worm eating a carrot. Mm -hmm. And that is detaching any everything, detaching the physical meat suit, detaching, you know, any time, detaching anything. So there's nothing that can be any different and should be any different than the mm. now is. So I understand pain. I understand pain. I understand what you mean with it. Um, where the feathers are useful for when you have pain, it's it's exactly what we talked about just before, we're setting everything free. Mm -hmm. And what you're setting free is also your expectation of a sequence. So let's go back to the to the to the 14 hour flight you need to question everything about your flight so you have an idea of you sitting down in the seat sitting down in a seat can be many different things it can be on a cushion it can be cross-legged it can be walking getting up walking back and forth in the aisle it can be doing exercises in the galley it can be so many different things uh, having a little a bouncing ball to massage your feet. Um, it, they have a microwave in most um, in most planes. You can have a little heat pillow with you that you can use. You can have uh, audio of inquiries that are looking into the body sensation right now. And no matter what is there, just allowing it to be that it can be a 14 hour inquiry, nonstop inquiry of what is going on. It can be the most profound experience of your life. Or it can be torturous and you should better stay home. Mm -hmm. It's about setting everything free. Um, and in, in order to do that, it I would really recommend you to 
go really deep into the material in the first three feathers. So you unhook all expectation about what anything is and really setting everything free, including your pain and including what the past used to be and what the future might be. And So the body yes and the body no, it's not like having a, a good, spacious, good feeling about something and that means I should do it and then the contraction is telling me no, don't do it. The, the it is it is and but um the body yes body no works when you no longer have any hooks into things being in a certain way yes okay. if you have any hooks into things being in a certain way it's very easy to manipulate the body yes body no mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's what i found a tricky one is is yeah. is a subtle one i could see maybe the contraction is uh, are you afraid of giving this workshop because I've never done it? Is that an issue? So I inquire this thing. Um, yeah. But but the body, yes, body, no, is, is, for example, it's like the first thing that arises in your head. So what 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 is your full name? Tell me your full name. Petra. Yeah, your full name. Petra Freund. Okay. And and you live you're sitting in your house? Yes. Yes. And is it Friday today? Um yes. Yes. Um have you had a nice day so far? Yes. Okay. Are you afraid of going to the workshop? <laughs> there was a pause. Your eyes what what your body mm -hmm. just told me, yeah. Your eyes went your your blink rate went up and your yeah. eyes Started to go like that, which means that you are no longer in your direct experience. You went straight up I into the future. I went to the future. Yeah. 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 Nothing, you've got nothing to do there. It doesn't exist. Yeah. 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 Which means that it's difficult for you to know. Well, you might actually know. How did it feel in your body when I said it? Did you get like. <laughs> A feeling of startleness, or did you get a yes, or did you get like no, 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 or what happened in your body? Do you remember? When you said if I want to go to the workshop, yeah, not that comfortable. How did it feel? Was it a body yes or a body no? You're thinking too much. It's it's a, I don't know. I felt like a, I don't know. I have another quote that I always throw at people. When you're in doubt, you're not in doubt. If it's something that you need to talk yourself into, mm -hmm. it's a no. Mm -hmm. It's. I mean, everybody who has bought a shirt and was in the store and going like, oh, this is a real nice shirt. I'm not really sure. Does it go with it? I'm not really sure. That's when the doubt, if you're in doubt, you're not in doubt. Don't buy the shirt. You're never going to wear it. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you don't have, if you're in doubt about going, you're not in doubt. You know mm -hmm. it. You just want things, you want reality to be different than it is and wish that you could go. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the thing what's coming up, the this, this story with that is that I don't want to be trapped in the past and just say I can do it and prove to myself I just can go and do it. That's that's forcefulness. Yeah. It's forcefulness. So, <laughs> I, so I would ask you about your past and ask you how many times in your life had you had a very clear experience as a child and your parents gaslit you into saying that you really wanted to and you were really happy and that was good or it's not your decision to make, it's my decision to make. Your will is in my pocket and all of those things. Where does that forcefulness come from? I think it it comes after giving birth to my, my son and I couldn't move and I was like, I almost died. 
and I could feel everything was challenging. Like I could not go to the supermarket for myself. I could not do anything. And eventually said to myself, you just get up, you do it. The worst thing, you just die. But if you stay in bed, you're not living also. So every day I challenge myself to do things. And I also think that brought me back to life, but maybe, yeah, maybe it was forceful as well. But 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 again, there's a difference, isn't there? Because if you say, I challenge myself every day to say, I'm going to do yoga every single day. That's one thing. Another thing is saying, I'm going to do a split right now and I'm going to forceful, forcefully do it, even if it takes me to the hospital. The worst thing that, that can happen is that I'm going to die. I mean, th those two things do not add up. No, it was, for example, I said, I'm just going, I'm going to take my baby. I walked to the store and even if I, at the store already, I was so tired and all the lights and everything was too much. So I just lay down in the store and, and I said, okay, then I just lay down in the store. But if I, if I'm not going, so things like that I've done. But that, but that's exactly what I mean. That if that, if it's done with it, there's, there's a difference in in finding the outer boundary, the, the outer uh, periphery of the boundary, if you do it forceful or if you do it with compassion, there's a difference. Because mm. we, I think we have, with the age that you and I have, we have all and everybody else here at the meeting. I just call all of you all, just so you know, that the age that we have, all of us have experienced that we at some point had to pick ourselves up by the bootstrap that we have to go, okay, sweetheart, I know you're in pain. I know this is difficult. Come on. I love you. We can do this. And then mm -hmm. you the compassion. But there's mm -hmm. a difference between doing that and doing, oh, going, hello, oh, I'm going to go to the store. You know, <laughs> but it's forcefulness. Yeah. There's a difference. Yeah. There's yes. a difference. One is done yes. with, with fuller compassion. And if I need to lie down in the store, we're going to lie down in the store. I'm going to be right with you. It's fine. There's a difference in that. Yeah. And I'm yeah. not I'm not a fan of forcefulness ever. I'm a huge fan. I mean, love is my religion. You know, I'm yes. a fan of Mine too. <laughs> yeah. Love and compassion all the way. All the way. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good thing to look to look at. I I, I have it for others, but maybe not so much for myself at there moments. I tell myself you can yeah. You second feather one. Yeah. Take that one to second feather and be and do inquiries about it. Find out mm -hmm. what is that underlying belief about that certain rules about Petra and other rules about other people. Mm -hmm. Think that. Why why is it that you think that certain rules apply to you and others to others? You know? Take second feather it. Take it to the second feather and do inquiries and feel into mm -hmm. it and allow whatever comes up to come up. And reach mm -hmm. out to any of the beautiful people that are here if you want mm -hmm. you know, somebody to to just listen or, or be by your side in it. Mm -hmm. I'm sure everybody who's here would would be there. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to hearing the next the next episode of Petra. Yes. <laughs> good. Good. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Suni, my friend. Hello. Good Hi. to see you. Yes, thank you. I have a question about the meditation. Yes. Because I, I got distracted in the beginning. Yes. And then I tried to follow along. But then I actually think I fell asleep. <laughs> because when it ended, I had no idea what it was. I was supposed to have done what it was. I mean... Is it just because I'm tired or is it because I simply overload and I cannot comprehend this or yeah, it can, it didn't... Or, or it can be that you go, it's very normal when you start to play with the feathers and you start to dissolve different things. It's very normal to go into that hypnagogic state. You know, the state you're in just before you fall asleep. It's a, if it's a full blown, like, and drool and everything so it's sleep no 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 no. that's another thing but you can go into into like a hypnotic state where where you are you're not here and you're not not here 
which means that you are not you cannot recall what I have said and you cannot recall what has happened, but you feel something has happened. A shift has happened mm -hmm. without you actually being aware of it. That is a, the a hypnagogic say. It's um we use Todd and I use that a lot. Uh, whenever we make material or uh, the next exercises, the next five exercises, I think that is coming out on Mondays, I am in a hypnagogic state when I'm speaking it. I'm sitting, haven't prepared anything. I know what I want to talk about. And I'm looking into the camera and talking nonstop for half an hour or something like that. I'm in a hyp hypnagogic state when I say that. So I'm doing explaining what it is that is happening and we're going to do the exercises together when we do it um todd is going into hypnagogic states when he writes so all the meditations that and inquiries that he does are written and the book he's writing right now is written in that hypnagogic state um and it's where you release um any kind of hooks into a meat suit being here, a past, present, future being here, um, into any kind of self being here, and you're just in in complete flow, and whatever is coming up is coming up, and and it's just arising and um, ceasing, happening, you know, like in a like in a wave or in a flow. Um, yeah. But if you're in a hypnagogic state, when you listen to, for example, the meditation we did or the inquiry we did here earlier, um, then you have the 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 feeling of being present, but you're not awake. You're not not awake. You can't remember what is said, but you can feel something has happened. It is the most I, it's the most yeah. susceptible place space to be in. Um, we have also talked about that we want to do uh, night meditations uh, and inquiries that are spoken that you listen to when you are asleep. So the transformation is happening while you're asleep. Um, and when you wake up in the morning, things have happened without you realizing you just view the world and yourself differently because there's been a reprogramming or brainwash, if you want to call that, happening during the night. Yeah, we have a program about brainwashing people. Want to sign up? <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> no. And okay. Yeah. But it was just because I, I, I heard that you were talking. I was there and I heard that I should wake up. And but simply my, my body just. Yeah. It really refused to listen yeah. to what you said. Yeah. To, to make meaning of it. Yeah. So, yeah, so I was just, uh, and for Petra, I just need to say that uh, somehow I can't seem to start on the fourth feather. So I'm stuck at three. I'm looking at four and thinking, oh, I'm a little here still. So, yeah. Love it. But, uh, love it. Yeah, that was love it. it. Love it. So. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And Phoebe, my friend. Hello, so good to see you. Hello. Well, I, I wanted to um, bring up this, this issue of how hungry I am for outside acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. I, I need validation from the outside. Mm -hmm. And um, just to let the whole group know what was going on, two weeks ago, Pernille said hello to me in a meeting, just acknowledge me. And later that night, I was talking to a friend of mine. And as I was telling them about this, I felt all this pressure in my chest. And I said, oh, my God, I feel like crying. It's like there's I'm holding back all these tears. And later that night, I sent Perneal an email and as I was typing the email and saying thank you for that little kindness today acknowledging me tears just poured down my face just this oh my god thank you for that kindness that little kindness I'm so hungry 
I'm so hungry for kindness. And um, so what I've been practicing for two weeks is if I need to go to the bathroom, I stop what I'm doing and I say, okay, go to the bathroom right now. So that's my understanding is what I need to do is just start listening to my body and listening to myself. What do I need? What do I want? And, um, you know, I listen to the toxic starting point and I'm like, 80% of passive aggressive. I mean, I'm just, this is just how I've lived my life. And it's so clear to me. And there's aggressive bully in there. I force fed a little girl a worm when she was like five years old. I just sat on top of her and forced a worm. I mean, that's the type of aggressive bully I am. I'm serious aggressive bully. But the passive aggression is the the art that's what i'm so good at and there's the chameleon you know i if i have plans and my sisters say they need someone to cover for them with their mother i drop my plans and i feel i feel that so so anyway i I have been searching my whole life. I was in therapy for 24 years, and then I was attached to a priest for 20 years and daily mass and on my knees, and I'm going to pray myself to wholeness. And yeah, well, that didn't work. So then I got into A Course in Miracles and non-duality and really like did it and now I'm doing this. Mm. And my boyfriend today said to me, you know, when are you going to stop seeking? Yeah. Like, when are you just, just going to move on, just move on. And I'm like, yeah, I get it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, from the outside. Yeah. You know, it's like, all I do is the seeking. So, um, Pernil, I really, I really need an answer. Like, yeah. is this just more spinning my fucking wheels? Because if it is, I want to get off now. I don't want to <laughs> wait five years. No, I understand. I understand. I, I I love your honesty. And and this can most definitely just be another wheel you're spinning. You can make this into a concept if you want to. The way that we're working with the fetters is trying to make it very, very clear that there are no fetters. There's nothing you can believe in. There's nothing you can hang your hat on. There's no one you can pray to. The only thing we want you to do is take everything you have done in your life up until this point, do everything again, but instead of doing it with your head, into the body with it feel into it every single insight okay. you have had when you did the cause of miracles it's great to understand it intellectually i want you to feel it it's great like we talked about byron katie before it's great intellectual understanding of it i want you to feel it if you yeah. instead of seeking revelation and you know seeking um approval from some somebody outside of you that is an intellectual felt experience. I want you to feel kindness and compassion. And that cannot be felt from the outside. You only felt the kindness and compassion that you projected onto me because it yeah. was in you. Yeah, em yeah. Empathy is felt in you. So what happened that day, two weeks ago, when I, when I greeted you and said, welcome, was that you felt compassion and kindness in you you then projected it onto me and said i was giving you that i wasn't well i was i am all the time i love you dearly i'm so happy you're here but you would not be able to feel that unless you had it in you 
And that is what we do differently. But yeah, okay. So it need you need to feel it. When you feel into into it's also why I have all the warnings when I talk about the toxic starting point. It's it's I love that you're so open about I am the the passive aggressive bully. I do not feel a need. I project other people and manipulate other people to f- feed my needs without me asking for it, which means I never ever get what I really, really need and want. And it leaves me in minus all the time. Acknowl- yeah. Acknowledging that can be done with the head. I want you to feel it. You know, I want you to feel it. So when you <clears throat> passive aggressively, <clears throat> excuse me, if when you passive aggressively manipulate your boyfriend into giving you a hug, I want you to feel, how does it feel to absolutely, right now being Phoebe, needing a hug, not asking for a hug, not going, sweetheart, please hug me, put your arms around me, just hold me. Not saying that, but, but manipulating him into it, you know, burning your hand so he come and say, oh, sweetheart, you burned your hand and you can say yes and hope for him to hug you. He doesn't. He just put a bandit and then he's off. Oh, no. Now you have to do something else to get the hug. Feel into how it feels to be that much in minus. To feel into how does it feel to be in the body. As Phoebe, that needs a hug. Can you be in yeah. a body that needs the hug and you refuse to yeah. ask for the hug and just stay with it? I'm not telling you to go and ask for a hug i want you to feel how does it feel to be in a body where you do not feel that you have the right to ask for your needs to be met for the first time in your life i don't want you to do therapy with it and thinking about it and talking about oh what you should do is just ask him to give you a hug and then sort it i don't want you to do that i want you to feel how it feels to be in a minus and that minus is met with love and compassion without changing anything. Got it, got it. Yeah, without yeah, yeah. Without changing okay. anything, you're okay. sitting next to Phoebe that needs a hug and you allow her to have the feeling of not having the right to ask for a hug. It's okay, sweetheart, I'm right next to you. Can you be in a body where you feel the need for a hug and you don't feel you have the right to ask for it? And you allow that to happen. You sit next to it. And you create compassion and kindness and love for that need to be there, but not the right to ask for it. That is what is meant. Yeah. So, yeah. so instead of having a resistance yeah. to something and keep resisting it, we have love towards the resistance. And that is yeah. The- and what, yeah. And what comes up is that vulner. I just feel so vulnerable and unlovable. Yes. I mean, the thing is, is what that feeling is. Yeah. No one would want to hug this. Okay. Can you be in a body that feels unlovable? Can you sit in your body right now yeah. and allow that to be there? It's okay to feel like that. You felt like that your entire life. Instead of sweeping it under the rock and telling yourself that you're okay and that's okay. And into the cerebral, stay in the body. Stay in the body. It's the body that needs healing. Yeah. yeah. And without and without changing anything, you allow what is there to be there. What you will experience is the more you allow it to be there, the less terrifying is it. It's like the metaphor I'm using that. It's like a big house. And when you've been in that room where Phoebe is unlovable, you go in, you turn the light on and you sit in the middle of the room and you allow this room to be as it is. You do not change anything. You just allow it to be. The more you just sit with that, the more comfortable you're going to be in that room. Yeah. And at some point, point, like any monster, when you turn the light on and look it straight in the eyes, at some point, It's not scary anymore. It can only be scary when we refuse it to be there. When we go into our mind and we try to, you know, cover it up or push it away or do anything, not feel it, not feel it. And that we can do for decades. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, all right. We're talking about what we're talking about when you go into the body and sit with it 
it is an experience that is going to be here. A lot of feeling unloved for 7 to 11 seconds. If you do not attach any thought to it and you just allow the body to feel what is felt right now, it's going to last 7 to 11 seconds. And we are running away 40 years of running not to feel those 11 seconds. Yeah. So what yeah. we're inviting you to do is not to trust anything we say. Do not lean on us in any way. Just go into your body. Stay with your body. Whatever comes up, love it. Just stay with it and see where it takes you. Okay. I can do that. <laughs> Good. And if you need any help, write to Todd. It, okay. it's, yeah, it's the worst idea ever to write to me. Okay. <laughs> right to talk. Okay. All right. I'm really happy. Thank you. I'm really, really happy that you're that you're this open about it. I love that. Thank you. Are you okay? I am. I am. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Just anything else, just let me know. I will. Okay, good, good. And it's Anna. Hello, my friend. Hello, Fernand. Um, so I don't know what is happening here. I think I'm just getting closer in touch with something what I wasn't available, what wasn't available before. Um so I got a week ago, there was like a lot piling up in the life and work and just everything. And um, I just start to feel like there is like a body just getting tense and tense and tense and tense. And uh, I couldn't figure out what happened. So I came home and I sat down and there's nothing. Mind is just quiet. Body is peaceful. Like a tiny, tiny contraction in the chest. And there's nothing that's coming up. You know, like no inner child is speaking, nothing. So um, I've done one of Scott Killaby's inquiries. Yeah. And um, so, the, you know, like he does them reverse um, uh, inquiries. And what came up, I have a very strong fear barrier to speak up and uh, because I fear they're going to get you know like of the of the anger of their anger and um, so that day at work I could see how mind was um doing that you know like getting in the future to avoid to feel what is happening and same time, simultaneously noticing what is happening and returning itself back here. I just yeah. was like automatically happening without like any me doing anything. So, you know, like some defense mechanisms are kind of dropping off. And it feels like if I used to be in sitting like a knight in armors, now I just have like a wee tiny shield left and I'm trying to patch it and uh, it's just like I become like very sensitive and I just feel very very childlike so on Monday I went back to work and there was nothing really much happening but I start to feel that tension again in the body it just feels like you've been squeezed out of a body and uh, so I sat down without you know child and just like trying to settle her down and just coming and all that and she started to cry she's just like I'm so scared I'm so scared and uh, so I'm, I'm noticing, you know, like how terrifying, you know, like I'm so startled of uh, hostility in people. And uh, it was driving back home now and I stopped like stopped a traffic light a bit sharp. And there was a driver behind me and I see him in the mirror. He is moving his mouse and he is a man. And I was just like, oh, it's just that, it's that instant fear, you know, like, oh my gosh, he's just so cross with me. Even now I'm talking, I'm always shaking. <laughs> I don't know what is happening. I, I just, I just feel so childlike. And it's not only about negative. 
at weekend, I went with my kids and uh, I was walking in the city and I just feel like I'm a small kid looking like, oh, look at the lights. And, you know, like it feels like them, my big kids walking me like a wee kid. And I'm just so enjoying and just like so full of joy. But yeah, like either that is something negative and feeling very childlike or that is some excitement, joyful, and I'm very childlike. So I don't know what is happening here. <laughs> what is the problem? Um, it just feels like I I can't. There is something I can't get. Like I feel like I have stuck in trauma. I feel like there is something deeper there because like I have lost any interest about awakening. Full stop. It's just like not going there completely, just no. And uh, it's just like trauma, 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 just here, just here, here, deeper, 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 deeper. And I can't get there. So what is the problem? Can't get there. <laughs> what is the problem with that? <laughs> Stephen, I've done that inquiry. I mean, on Thursday, I got like that strong, strong tension, and I couldn't find, you know, like what is happening after I done that inquiry. I felt like a lot of lightness, and uh, I just felt like, you know, when you talk about your house, I just felt like I got the key to unlock a few doors because I become aware of so many things I wasn't aware before and I also recognize this is very very same tension I had it most of my life but I wasn't aware of it and I was drinking it away yeah and uh, so now like I have no coping mechanisms I'm just like whatever happens it just happens and I just hear and uh, I forgot what I was going to say but it's because I'm I'm asking the same question. What is the problem with it? What 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 is the problem with having all the trauma of right now and being fed up with awakening and being fearful when you see somebody in the mirror behind you sitting and yelling at you and um not having any coping mechanisms? What is the problem with any of it? I think I'm scared of being vulnerable. And what is the problem with being scared of being vulnerable? You're the only person I would ask things this way. You're the only person that I would dare doing this with. Breathe. It's also, um, I used to be, when I was watching the, that aggressive bully really resonates but also that um mm, what is that third one chameleon yes and i used to be like very anger outbursts out like you know like, attacking people yeah and like really standing up like not like standing up for myself i was ready oh, no. to kill people yeah averting yeah <laughs> Yeah, and it's all it's all gone. Yeah. And all, all what is left now there is that chameleon can't speak up for itself anymore. I just you know, like you're not protected. And another day I was in my child's school to speak about his behavior, and that woman she's asking me a question, and I can see that question coming up, and I just like I couldn't speak. I just like freeze response. Yeah. And what is the problem in that? <laughs> Everything just happening. <laughs> yeah, but but what you what you what you don't want to say is that when I ask you the question, what is the problem? You what you don't dare to say because you know you can't answer that. It's I don't want it to be like that. I want it to be different. I want to be into awakening. I want to find the calm. I want to know what to do. I want to... I definitely want to know what to do, yes. I don't want to be into awakening, at least for now. 
<laughs> it's, it's, it's just too much on top of what is happening it's just too much and also you know what i find out with awakening here uh it was my escaping you know when i get there uh, that's all will be vanished and i will be happy that's it that's over or i can put you know like my achievement on a shelf look at me uh, and you know once i saw that it's just like i never had any experience I'm not losing anything. I'm happy where I am, the way things are. But that, you know, that's... What I would like for you to do is to... Uh, remember when Todd, when, when, when Todd, when he talks about the reparenting, mm-hmm. it's that part that, you know, a feeling or an emotion is coming out, um, a bit like, like, uh, like Phoebe was talking about, you know, something is coming up, and Petra was talking about, something is coming up. And then instead of wanting to intellectualize it and finding a solution, and all of that, I would like for you just to stay with it for the first time in your life. Could you slow down? Could you just breathe and just sit with that? So when somebody is saying something and there is that expectation to say something, sound clever or to know what to say or anything, and you don't know, you're just mute. Can you just stand there with Anna being mute? And they're not knowing what to say. Smile cutely. And that was basically all you could do. And then you just stay with that. So instead of instead of having that defense mechanism of do, 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 you have that because you believe that you have a value in life because of what you can say, what you can do. Um, it's not what, it's not, the the value of you is not in who you are is what you can say and do. And that is a delusion. That has no, all your faculties can be lost and you would still be wonderful. So it's that removing all of the expectations to you being in a certain way and doing in a certain way and saying in a certain way and just allowing what is. And if it's like little Anna being in the car and being really scared with the guy yelling at her, can you just be there? Kind of like split, you know, saying to her, it's fine. It's okay. I understand you're afraid. You have a full life of adults yelling at you. It's fine. Breathe. Just breathe. We- I'm doing that. I'm doing yeah. that a lot. And also, you know, like, um, like, can you stay in the body, feel so agitated? Can you stay in the body, feel so dysregulated? Because sometimes I can't even make up, you know, like what that is. So it's just like I'm saying, can you stay in the body, feel so dysregulated? Yes. And um, you don't have to, you ha- don't have to take to be able to explain what it is because that is taking it up into the head. Just stay with the body. Can you be this discombobulated right now and just be with that? take you know a step aside and just look at Anna and go look it's it's okay it's okay I'm I'm, I'm normally taking her I'm on a lap I'm yeah. comforting her closer to me yeah yeah and just, then moments when I'm doing that she really just you know expresses that fear and the like, breaks in tears and just like really just shaking and crying yeah yeah Can you be with that? Is that okay? Can it be in any other way? No, because that's all what is happening. <laughs> it's, it's the only thing that is that is alive and happening right now. And if you remove any expectation about how it could be any different, that's the four five. And if you remove any timeline about the past when you really had it together and the future where you will so have it together and just stay with what is right now, just like what what I talked with Lisa about with the dog barking, you know, dissolving the silence, the sound and the silence and anything that is here right now is the only thing that's here right now. It cannot be in any other way. There cannot be any hooks into wanting that to be any different than it is right now. So slowing down, slowing down and whatever is right now, it cannot be anything but absolutely fine. It's okay. And I want you to feel it, not think it, but really, really feel it in your body. And if something uncomfortable come up, second fed it, 
all the exercises you have from the second feather. Stay. I with think it. I'm just living in the second feather now. Yeah, <laughs> you moved in. <laughs> I'm fully. All I houses moved mine. into the second feather. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think a lot of people live in Traumaville. It's just, it just feels you know like once you open that Pandora box, it's just like more, 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 more. Yeah. And it's only it it becomes really really overwhelming when we when we try to you know when we try to control all of the things that come up and come and come up come up come up it's it's just an extension of of the delusion that I can control anything you know if I have lived a life where I had everything under control then the moment I I allow the body to feel what the body mm-hmm. feels it feels like everything is just you know. And then staying with that, really, truly knowing that there's nothing to control. There is no controller and nothing in this moment is wrong. Nothing in this moment can be any different than what it is right now. And I'm right here with me. I got full love, support, kindness and compassion. Thank you. So welcome. So welcome, my love. So welcome. thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful people. I'm so happy you guys are here. Okay, is there any more questions? Yeah, Irene? Yeah, um, I was just, uh, you know, our last meeting about boundaries uh, without knowing that that was the topic, I uh, went in for some body work, um, and I've been having a problem with my hand, not a problem, but sensations and certain differences uh, in what I normally feel in my hands. And the body worker was working on my hand, and uh she asked if I had seen the hand doctor in town. And uh, what came forward was that, yes, I had seen Dr. Blank. And that when I had walked into the room and sat down, there was a table. uh, And he walked in and uh, in saying hello, he reached under the table and touched my knee like he would have touched my hand to say hello, only it was my knee. And I was like a deer in the headlights. I couldn't say anything. And um, what came out was a lot of emotion as I was on the body workers table, which was great, all that release. And um, the following day, um, I was talking with a colleague of mine and sharing this. And She said, I don't know whether this is a projection or not, but can you recall a time when you froze as a kid and immediately it was right there. It was that I was driving in the car with my dad and he had a, there was a bench seat. It wasn't bucket seats, but a bench seat in the car. And he would put his hand between my thighs as we were, as he was driving. And suddenly it was like, oh, That's where all of this, you know, I couldn't say anything, I, but I would freeze. And uh, um, I just want to share the power of this work, even when I didn't know we were dealing with boundaries that week, (laughs) to have all of that emerge uh, was quite a release. And I'm just very grateful for being able to be with all of this as it arises. 
and, yeah. and it's also why this work is so beautiful because um in normal psychotherapy you would then talk about talk about that incident over and over and over and over in what we call in the seven feather creating something out of nothing and and what we mean with it is not that i'm trying to negate the situation at all it's more the looking at the situation how it was felt in the body and staying with that felt experience and not create a story and then labels on the story 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 because a lot of times what happens when we do that is that the story changes and we remove from the felt body experience so staying in that what you did staying in that direct experience in the body of that freezing up there's space to setting everyone involved free mm. there's space to setting you free to setting the doctor free to setting your dad free to setting everyone free um and look at your life choices with compassion that you yeah. have chosen to interact in the world the way that you do because of all of those experiences yeah good yeah yeah so thank you yeah i just want to say for anybody who might watch the recording afterwards that if you in any way have experienced anybody acting inappropriately towards you and you think that you need help make sure that you find somebody that you trust that can help you uh, in this situation I'm not trying to make anybody into a doormat. So I know you know that, Irene. I just wanted to make sure that if anybody hears the recording afterwards, that that has been said. Thank you. Good. Thank you very much, everybody, for for being here. Thank you very much, all of you, to share it, for sharing this wonderfully. I love this so much. Uh, I'm going to upload this uh, recording later today, and it's going to be in the members area. You can watch it as many times as you want to. I'm going to split the exercise that we did in the beginning up so you have it separately. It's going to go public in about two weeks' time. It's normally a bit delayed, uh, so you guys have it in the members area. Remember that we have the the inquiry group on Tuesday and write to Todd on, on federalmindfulness at gmail.com to get the link if you don't have it. If you were there last Tuesday, it's the same link. And if you check up in the members area, I'm go also going to put the link in there. So if you get to write and everything, you know, life overtakes you in the fast lane, then it's fine. You're going to get the link in the members area before Tuesday. Um, and if you're interested in the retreat that we're going to have in week 24, the 10th to the 16th of June, interested in hearing more about that, um, also write to Todd. <clears throat> and we're going to have you on a list so we know who we're going to tell more about it when we get closer to that. And I think that was it. That was it. It was so nice seeing all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye.